Yeah, thanks for the introduction. So my name is Evgeny. So some people know me, but uh, I guess only three people, not much. Uh, so I, I'm going to talk about Elasticsearch, like how we used it in our company to, to, to allow our customers to search inside the videos. So basically the company is called QMA. So that's a spin-off from EDAP. Do you know what EDAP is? No? So it's basically, it's the Machine Learning Institute uh, located in Martini, which is uh, part of EPFL. So all uh, cool guys doing machine learning are actually there. And uh, so basically what they did, they, they developed a speech recognition technology that uh, 2012, it was the best uh, on the market. It was 20% better than YouTube. And uh, they went with this technology on the market, and they, they, their goal was to transcribe all the video in the, in, the, in the world and make them searchable for people. So that's what they wanted to do. So then uh, the company, like, they had some initial success. Then uh, by 2015, it was in a pretty bad shape. So the CTO left, and, uh, uh, and then we met the co-founder of, uh, of this company. So me and uh, my friends, and we started talking, and we kind of liked the idea, and we decided to give it a second, a second chance. So what we did, like uh, what you're going to see now, we basically build this product in three months. So we really put all the effort there. Then we went to search for investment uh, in US. So everything was going well until uh, the last moment when the Chinese investor, basically the strategic investor that wanted to invest into the company, they were bought by Alibaba and then they froze all the investment projects. So then uh, we stayed actually without cash and we had to shut down the company. So kind of the, the sad end, but I think we learned quite a lot uh, like by doing it both from the business experience and from the technical experience and you'll see some of the results uh, next. So, so I did my PhD at EPFL in web technologies. So that's basically how we started. Uh, like that's where we met this co-founder of KMA, and uh, we brought our web technology skills into the company. And uh, then I was uh, in 2015, like starting from January, as CTO of KMA. And uh, so when the company was, uh, uh, when we decided to stop the company, like I joined a startup called GateUp in uh, Sysfront here. So what they do, they do sensors, uh, motion sensors for doctors and for the sports. So I'm working there on the ski sensor project. And, uh, and the other part what I'm involved now, we have a Poma Lab, a consulting, IT consulting company. And like there are also two people here so we tried to launch this business. So that's uh, a bit about me. So the next step, like uh, why Elastic? And the funny thing, we basically, we didn't have to choose. It was there, like all the tools that we got from the previous team, they had Elastic, they had CouchDB, they had Python server, and we basically replaced everything. We removed the CouchDB from the mix, we br brought in uh, Mongo, we replaced uh, the Python server with uh, Node.js server, we rebuilt the new interface, and but uh, we kept the Elasticsearch. So we still like upgraded it to the new version, we set up the connection with MongoDB rather than CouchDB and like fixed all the queries that were broken. And uh, yeah, so I think we were pretty happy with Elasticsearch and we are happy until now it's like to, uh, for this presentation, I decided like to put everything together. So and it did not take me that much time. So it's still working, so it's good. So I hi highly ad advise it uh, to use, like if you really have like some, uh, like if you want to have search on your platform. So it's a pretty good tool. So now I'll jump into the demo. Oops, not here, not here. Here is the demo. So that's the web platform that we built. So you, well, basically we allow people to bring all their video content into the platform and then uh, we make them searchable. So this is an example like how it's working. So you type more or less something. Uh, it searches inside the videos, it searches by title and you can directly play this video and Like if I click on this part of the transcript, the video jumps and class of people that rejects cynicism. So, so that's the landing page. 
so that's a little bit like what we did so we bring all the video content into the platform we do speech to text on it to extract uh, the uh, the spoken content then we apply uh, natural language processing on the content to extract topics uh, keywords uh, etc then we plug everything uh, into elastic search engine and we use it uh, for the search to search in inside the videos so i'll show you an account now like that's a demo account that we built for world economic forum so those are the videos that we plugged uh, from the youtube so now if i uh, type economy here so it gives me a list of videos so you see matches matches in the title you see matches in the transcript and you also see like uh, where it matches in the transcript and you can directly jump on this part and the video uh, should play from there and uh, so we also see like all other matches in the video like where people talking about economy so if you try something else maybe russia because i am from there uh, not really well yeah china so that's uh, the transcript uh, we see that, that uh, at this part of the video people are talking about china so all built uh, basically with Elasticsearch there. So, um, so what happens with the videos after? So people uh, like let's say a company they have a lot of video content. They put the video content there, and then they want uh, to bring the search into their uh, own uh, environment. So they don't want people to come to this platform and search. So what we did, we built a lot of different plugins that uh, they can just put a small JavaScript code on their page and then it either kind of embeds the whole search experience there or it uh, extends the search uh, with the possibility to search also inside the video content. So uh, example, basically you come here, you customize uh, this embed code in a different way and then you take this uh, embed code and you put it in your environment so that's one way like if you have a big place f where you want to put video collection on the website you can plug it there so one example so that's the page you built for world economic forum so you see here it's kind of fits inside and those are the videos coming from our platform and uh, so we see those uh, so we also use the part of elastic search which allows you to basically get the videos that are similar to uh, to the open video so that's what we use here like for the similar files in your collection so we use elastic search to understand what are the videos in the video collection that are similar in content to the open video so I, i'm going to show after the queries and everything so yeah that's uh, the experience that we have uh, that that's how it looks uh, on the website of the people like of, of the customer and uh, so what we do afterwards like all the queries that they are doing uh, we are checking it and then we provide analytics for the customer so if i come here and i open analytics bar so you see here the like different queries that people are using so those are the uh, analytics on the video content and uh, what you can see you can see like total searches that people did uh, like what queries they used what queries that the uh, uh, customer or like clients of our customers were using to basically like they found something they clicked on it and the other part it's uh, when people were searching and they didn't find anything so and afterwards what we give to our customers we give kind of uh, this tool uh, on the left you see all the topics that are present in the video collection and on the right you see videos that are people watching or searching for and like this uh, they can look and they can understand like how their uh, video content is performing what works what doesn't work and where they have uh, lack of content so for example here like on the topic of innovation economics or energy development people are watching this kind of concepts but uh, company doesn't have uh, much videos on this topic so yeah so that's basically like our tool our solution that we were using and uh, like I don't know if you have questions already now or like all the questions are after how it's organized yeah 
Good. So if you have questions, just uh, stop me anytime, and uh, otherwise I continue. Like, good. So let's say no questions. So that's the first part of the demo. That's the second, and that's analytics. And now a bit like how we build this stuff. So on this diagram, you see this is the user. He uploads a file in the browser. So in the browser, what we have, we have a mix of Angular JS and uh, React JS uh, uh, that uh, has that kind of uh, manages our uh, web interface. Then the video goes into Node.js server. From Node.js server, we send it to our cluster that does uh, speech recognition on it. Then we extract the transcript from there. So the transcript goes back to the Node.js server. Then it's stored in MongoDB. So from MongoDB, we have uh, Elasticsearch Riva that sends uh, data to Elasticsearch. And then when user starts to search, when I type my search queries, they go through the Node.js server, which transforms them into Elasticsearch queries. Then we get back the results and uh, we populate uh, these results from the MongoDB database with some extended fields that are we are not storing in the Elasticsearch. And then we uh, send the videos on the, on the client. So that's the architecture more or less that we had. It was like uh, quite more complex, but that's a simplified version because we were storing like uh, videos in S3. So the the clusters were downloaded with uh, from S3, etc. But more or less that's how it was working. So then uh, like what we were using, uh, we were using Elasticsearch 1.5, I believe, but I tried to I upgrade uh, Elasticsearch to 1.76 uh, and it's still working. So that's, I did not try it on the new one, but uh, yeah, so that's what we used here. So then uh, for MongoDB, basically like, uh, because, uh, so we used uh, a river, MongoDB river. So do people know what the river is? Uh, yeah. Like was, yeah, was. <laughs> So it's basically it's a way to say that uh, I have my data in MongoDB and I have Elasticsearch. And the river is a way to say, well, as soon as you have new data from MongoDB, push it back to Elasticsearch. And so what we did, uh, so MongoDB, we had to configure it uh, with replication because when you have a replication for MongoDB, you have kind of a way to track the, the history. And then the river is uh, listening to this history, and as soon as there are uh, changes to the fields or new fields are are added into MongoDB, then this data goes to Elasticsearch automatically. So we just basically store. Yeah, a question. Uh, uh, yeah, just a question. Why introduce Mongo? Like, you know, why not go full on with Elasticsearch? Because it can end up being the same document where JSON. Mm. I actually don't, I, I think it's an interesting question. We did not ask that question uh, at that time. So at that time we were storing everything in MongoDB and f uh, for us Elasticsearch was just the way to search for the data. So we were using it only as a search. Uh -huh, okay. I think in our case, like we actually didn't think about this. So we had everything in MongoDB, we built everything in MongoDB, and then we just uh, transformed in Elasticsearch what we needed to. Yeah. And then, yeah, so we had MongoDB River for it uh, set up. Then uh, what we were doing, like we had file and we were storing in MongoDB transcript separately. So for files, we were transmitting to MongoDB uh, fields like name, description, uh, concepts that we extracted. And for the transcript, uh, we had to change it a little bit because uh, for us, the, trans the transcript, what we had is like we had a word, time, time, next word, time, next word. So basically what we did, we, we had a way to split all this text or like word timed words into segments of maximum fi 50 symbols. And that's what you saw in the search that uh, 
here is basically you, you, you have segments here. So, and we were searching inside the segments and that's the beginning of the segment. So what we did for this, so yeah, we had a way to, we split uh, our text or our transcript into segments of 50 symbols. For this we had uh, some JavaScript function enabled in Elasticsearch that was doing it. So as soon as there is a new transcript in the MongoDB, it does split it into segments and then it puts those segments into Elasticsearch. And uh, then like for, we had the uh, parent to child relationship to map the files, the transcript to the files. So that's, uh, well here you don't see much, I think it's on the next slide. But yeah, so that's basically the way we put this file mapping into, th that's the code to put the file mapping into Elasticsearch. So, and then uh, what we did, so after all this setup, then we had uh, basically three major uh, search queries for Elastic. So the first one, uh, so that's type of query. So here what is important, like we had this elastic uh, highlight option so that we see where the matches are in the transcript. So in the file or in the transcript uh, you see matches. So that's what we uh, achieved by using highlight. Then uh, we were using here a filter of transcripts by parent video ID. So that's like we are searching in inside one video. So we, uh, we search inside all the transcripts. We filter them by their parent, which is a file. Then we use the highlight and we find the list of segments that uh, match the query. So that's uh, more or less the structure. Is it clear? Questions? Good. So, so next one, uh, like, uh, so that's a search where we are, we are searching over the whole uh, video collection. So basically we are searching in the titles of all videos and we are searching in the transcripts uh, related to this video or in the transcript segments. Again, highlights, we are we're using a filter by user because uh, all the videos uh, in the collection, they belong to one, one user. Then we were searching inside the uh, name, uh, description, content and tags and we were using uh, boost to give different importance like bigger importance to name and less importance for description, content and tags. And uh, and then we used uh, parent to child uh, uh, mapping to search inside the child uh, transcripts uh, of, of a file. Again, highlights. So we basically we retur return in a file name or title and description with the matches plus all the transcript segments where there is a match. And then we are also using the Elasticsearch to rank them uh, uh, by. Uh by importance to the query. So uh, if you noticed maybe, so here uh, the time is not necessarily ordered by time. So here we return two, but those are the most important. But actually if you, ah, that's, uh, that's uh, I'm trying to click on the picture. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm saying I'm trying to click, but that's a screenshot, so it's not clickable. Ah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, example. So we basically like the first one goes the most important one. And uh, yeah, and the other thing, uh, so that's a different query. So we are, we are using the query of Elasticsearch more like this. And uh, we were basically specifying the video to use as the, uh, like this, and uh, then give us all the videos that are similar to this video. Uh, and here we used the fields uh, that we wanted to use to, to define the simila similarity between the videos. So I guess, uh, yeah, that's it, more or less. I hope I'm in on time. Yeah. So uh, questions now, I guess.